During a State of the State address, Susanna Martinez spent a lot of time on education, both early childhood and some dropout prevention. College prep efforts in high school, certainly with some show business, but let's start with early childhood. Whitney, you were working in the legislature during the advent of the pre-K pilot program that the Lieutenant Governor knows so well. That was a bit of a battle. Have Republicans warmed up to the idea of directing funding towards more early childhood development? Is that something that's getting some traction now? I think that they, uh, Republicans certainly support early childhood development. I mm -hmm. think that the question is how, okay. and I think that the Republicans and the Democrats definitely differ on this view. I, I'm surprised you remember I was up there. That was a little while ago. <laughs> um, it, I absolutely, I think that the Democrats are pushing for funding mm -hmm. for at least one year, if not two years, in front of kindergarten. Uh, most Republicans believe that we're having a very difficult time funding properly K through 12 as it is. Um, and my personal opinion on this, absolutely 100%, is that we've got to try to focus on those early grades from K to three. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and that earlier childhood, we've got lots of private care providers in the state that do this. You have lots of children that are home with their parents during that time. There's already Head Start funding for um, mothers and families that need uh, early childhood education assistance because they've got to get to work. Um, I don't think that you're going to see much move on that because I don't think that there's enough money in the budget for it. Mm. But I think what you will see under uh, Governor Martinez's leadership, and it looks like what the legislature may be leaning towards, is more work towards helping children be able to certainly read uh, at the third grade level before they're passed on to the fourth grade sure. level. So. Lieutenant Governor Natch, I got to go to you on this one. You were there for, and not only that, for the year of the mm -hmm. child mm -hmm. from Governor Richardson back one as well. Um, what were the main takeaways from that endeavor of how we need to fix this problem for pre-K and early childhood intervention? What were the big stumbling blocks? As well, you I, I think that the, the big stumbling block is the lack of education on, on the part of all legislators, and that is learning begins at birth. Mm. The most mind synapses are happening from prenatal until they're three years old. Mm -hmm. And funding should start there. We spend less than 1% of our state budget on anything related into the zero to five years. And we send unhealthy, challenged kids with huge deficiencies to a classroom and we say to a teacher, bring them up to standardized testing. Third grade is not early, first grade is not early. Mm -hmm. The gaps are created in the first five years. Mm -hmm. And if you go to school with those gaps in education, you never catch up. What I don't understand, I gotta mm -hmm. jump in Please. here. The Absolutely. Democrat point of view on this is I don't understand it. Why do you assume that just because children aren't in a funded school program that they aren't learning before they go to kindergarten? Well, that's where there the mistake so is. Whitney doesn't understand what early childhood, what this is for. It, it's I don't for understand. home visiting, that it's is, for that's, quality childcare. No, child that's absolutely care. ridiculous. Many parents are able to educate their children at home all the way until they're 18 years old, mm -hmm. much less until they're in kindergarten. And the fact that, you know, that so many Democrats seem to think that children ought to be in some kind of an institution or a school schoolroom mm -hmm. in order to receive it doesn't have anything to do with is, institutional it doesn't have anything to does. do with that You're it mm -hmm. has to do board. with home visiting programs where mm -hmm. we have many mm -hmm. Presbyterian can tell you drives down the cost of health care gets rid of the million dollar babies saves right. emergency room costs it's actually about parent coaching and helping parents many of whom are single family mm -hmm. parenting and it's not the Democrats it's science mm -hmm. And if, if the most conservative economist at the University of <laughs> Chicago, Dr. James Heckman, says this is the investment that states should be making, this is the investment that gives you the most return for the money. Mm -hmm. Doesn't have anything to do with classrooms. It has to do with uh, the first three years, pre-K, child care assistance so families can go to work and their, and their kids. Costs more in this state to go to quality child care than it does to go to the University of New Mexico. Hmm. As a percentage of, child. right. These are incredible numbers. Right. Jamie, given that, and I, we've read the science the Lieutenant Governor has, has pointed out here, given there's not much argument, I hear your point, Winnie, but, but given there's not much argument about the how precious this is at this age, mm -hmm. why don't we just agree to throw more resources at it? Why do we have a disagreement at all about this if the results are so clear for, for our children? Are the results clear? I don't know that they are, and I think that's why there's skepticism about whether these pro but, but programs- But is, that, is that a reason to stay put? I'm, no, gonna, I'm gonna stop you right I'm here. Not is that a that reason that to, to not do anything differently? Well, it's interesting because I actually think there's people in the state that are actually trying to move this dialogue along mm -hmm. and say, hey, it's time for us to, to experiment with this. Mm -hmm. By taking dollars out of the permanent fund. You're going to see a push from, from uh, folks at St. Joseph's and others that are involved in you know, mm -hmm. the Catholic Church, uh, pushing for the constitutional amendment that says, okay, let's take part of the permanent fund and invest it in these kinds of programs. And whether it's called an investment or it's called spending by some mm -hmm. is going to be up for debate. Mm -hmm. But the reality is it has strong support from the Catholic Church 
And uh, I think that in order to get that passed through the legislature, it's all going to depend upon this conservative block of Democrats. Mm -hmm. um, and it's Papin, Cervantes, uh, those, pe those people that are part of the coalition, essentially, that elected sure. Papin. Sure. So it's, it's all going to, the, the focus is going to be on them this, this session. And her and we'll choices for committee assignments and all that other stuff right. that gives these It'll things be a chance. Exactly I right. Think, I think what we're seeing at this table and what, and what we see throughout the state and to a certain extent throughout the, to a large extent throughout the country, is that we have fundamental differences between the two parties about whether um, we're looking at investment or we're looking at spending, mm -hmm. whether we're looking at taxes or we're looking at ensuring that we have the funds to get done what we want government to get done. And um, I think Whitney's, Whitney's comment was, was a, a telling one. Um, she said it would be great to, to get certain things done, but we don't have the money. The reason we don't have the money is that we haven't made the decision that it's worth it to go and get it mm -hmm. in order to do these things for little kids. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Let's hold up here. The Democrats did something we don't always see after the state of the state. They delivered a rebuttal, much like what you see after a state of the union speech by the president. I thought this was really interesting that Senate Majority Leader Michael Sanchez gave it. And at times, particularly with regard to education policy, he was steamed. And I will tell you, it's one thing to take a photo op at a school why don't you go in and teach a class of 30 students if you really want to find out what it's like? If you really want to see what the issues are, go to the school, not as a photo op, not to bring props, but to go to that school and understand what's going on in that school. Do it and find out what teachers are going through. I got a question. Just something comes to mind when I, when I hear that. Does, does he have a point calling, you know, using terms like props and photo ops, or did he take that just a little too far in your gut? I happen to believe that the governor has uh, her heart in the right place and has a real interest in helping children in New Mexico. I don't think that her visit to schools is entirely a photo op. I do, however, think that those images are of, of her must test quite well. Mm -hmm. They do help her popularity. And so I think probably her personal interests and her political interest dovetail nicely. There. Sure. Lieutenant Governor, I want to read you something from her state of the state address and get your reaction to this. As we improve academic performance in New Mexico, we cannot overlook the crucial role that New Mexico's teachers and other school leaders play in this effort. One of the greatest gifts a teacher can give a child is hope, a belief that the child can do anything and be anyone. I, I ask you this question under that idea. It turns out in a lot of the studies about teachers, we lose about half of our teachers within the first five years of their career. They just quit. You know, if they're unprepared, how we teach our teachers to get ready for the classroom is clearly not making it in New Mexico or anywhere else. How does that bit hit you? And do we need some systemic change about how we teach our teachers, so to speak, before we get them in the classroom here in New Mexico? You know, I think there's great room for improvement mm -hmm. on how our universities uh, teach and how much theory do they actually do and mm -hmm. how much, I, I, I'm, I'm always inclined to believe there's a little more theory then there is classroom time, right. and it's improved over the years. But the very best teach pro teacher programs around the country actually have you paired with a mentor teacher mm -hmm. who is doing things, and then you go back and you say, Get, you take your theory, mm -hmm. and you say, you know, two days a week you do that, three days a week you're in the classroom, or um, some of those really great programs that are mm -hmm. uh, in there. But all of those things, Teacher training also requires money, and it's right. not just bits and pieces. And I, I do want to make one comment Please. about the investment. Mm -hmm. In New Mexico, we have $12 billion in the land-grant permanent fund for education. Mm -hmm. And we, our kids are 49th in child well-being. That should be unconscionable to every New Mexican. And that's where the education money comes from. It's not the one that's going to help with the town if they're wiped out by a tornado. Right. It's, not the, it's not the rainy day fund. Mm -hmm. And frankly, if this isn't a catastrophe in education where we need to make sure that we're doing the things to prepare kids to go to school, mm -hmm. what is? Let me see one more follow up on that. I want to go to Jamie on something. The governor has asked for about 11 million, just over 11 million dollars to reward good teachers. Now this is interesting because we've heard a lot about uh, punitive actions, okay. about getting rid of right. teachers who are not making it and not so much rewarding teachers. Did, th is that a positive in your mind? And, and my second question on that is who determines who gets the money? I mean, what's the criteria well, if you're really doing well? It's a big old pot of money. Well, for 89 school districts, mm -hmm. if you do the math, it's sometimes it may not be that much. Okay. But I do think it's important to 
to bring experienced teachers into the hardest teach classrooms with the toughest populations. Sure. And I think there have been some programs like that around New Mexico and in the South Valley and, and mm -hmm. that have said, you know, a, a teacher incentive to teach in specific places and they sign a contract right. to meet certain metrics. Those are good ideas. Mm -hmm. $11 million in 89 school districts probably won't go very far. Yeah. It'll get eaten up by Albuquerque, Las Cruces, the bigger <laughs> districts. Mm -hmm. But it's, a, it's, a, good, it's, right. a, it's yeah. a good start <laughs> and, right. and we shouldn't poo-poo it because sure. Respecting teachers, rewarding teachers is important. Mm -hmm. Jamie, finish up for us. We've got about yeah. 30 seconds left. Your thoughts on education. Did the governor strike the right tone here? Are we on our way towards something differently, different to ex and our expectations? I, I think the fact that she's been working this hard for the last two years, mm -hmm. you know, in pushing this part of her agenda, I do believe that she really does care about kids. And uh, so I, I do think that she's probably making progress specifically on the on the, the uh, third grade reading issue mm -hmm. and I think there is, are, is probably enough support in the legislature for that mm -hmm. we're probably gonna see that pass and that's gonna be an interesting thing about anything else you know remains to be seen there you go remains to be seen That's a good way to put it we'll have more on high school programs online in a web extra so be sure to check that out in a moment Mary Kay Papin fresh off a power play that put her into the Senate pro tem seat examines the power struggles between the Albuquerque Santa Fe Berlin corridor and the rest of this huge state.